and condemn violence in any form. Well, we can speak to Victoria Cooper now, who is a research editor at the United States Studies Centre at the University of Sydney. Thanks very much for your time here on BBC News. Can we just start by talking about um, uh, the uh, convention and particularly the, the um, candidates who were running, who were in the past very critical of Trump and now presenting that united front? Do you think voters forgot what they said in the past or now it doesn't really matter? Yeah, I think that's a really important question going into the RNC, but I think what we're seeing is a show of unity, and I think it's possibly a unity that Democrats would be jealous of. I've heard comments that the RNC this year looks to be much more like the TNC being the Trump National Convention in that uh, the party is so consolidated on their leader. Uh, this is unlike conventions in 2016 and 2020, where there were signs of resistance against Donald Trump as the nominee. This seems... So everyone consolidated unanimously uh, is endorsing Donald Trump to run again. And the appointment of uh, the uh, VP candidate, J.D. Vance, what do you think that um, can do to the polls and, and indeed what Trump is hoping that can do to the polls? Yes, yeah, so far, no real movement in the polls. It might be a bit too soon to know, but I think what it does have implications for is the future of the Republican Party. Uh, J.D. Vance is quite conservative in his social views. Uh, he's kind of a symbol of this new right movement. He's the first millennial to be a vice president pick. Uh, and he really captures a lot of the emotion of uh, many conservatives, especially young elites in Washington, uh, many on the Hill. He kind of represents that ideological faction and sense to a lot of what Trump has to say. And so while the polling hasn't moved so far, I think we'll probably see in the coming days. But at this stage, it really is uh, J.D. Vance sort of capturing the same sort of uh, bases that Trump already has advantages in. Uh, and with, with this united front that's being presented, where does that leave the Democrats at the moment? I think it shows a really stark contrast between the Republicans and the Democrats. At the moment, uh, certain calls for uh, Joe Biden to stand aside have been hushed, especially uh, the assassination attempt, uh, but they have been re-upped today. Um, Donald, uh, Joe Biden spoke at the NAACP meeting in Los Angeles, and he actually quoted Harry Truman, who said, if you want a free Washington, uh, get a dog, which I think probably says uh, that he is not necessarily the fan favourite in Washington at the moment. Um, but there are ex expected that this was about standing aside has not yet ceased and that we might hear more in the coming days. Mm. Going back to Donald Trump, what, what do you think we're expecting from his speech? Yeah, I'm really interested to see how Donald Trump approaches his speech tomorrow night. I think part of it will be uh, he's promised to have a more moderate tone. He said he wrote a speech and he threw it out and that particular speech that he ripped up uh, was much more aggressive against uh, Joe Biden. And this is potentially a good moment for him to kind of just pick. Uh, in, he has that consolidated base of Make America well, Great Again supporters that he won decisively in the primaries. This is an opportunity for him to really pivot and catch some of the uh, votes from more moderate Republicans, from independent voters, from people in swing seats, and taking a more moderate message and uh, toning down some of his rhetoric will certainly uh, help him make strides in those bases of the electorate. So it'll be really interesting to see whether he does take a more moderate tone and how potentially the assassination attempt has helped him rewrite that script. Mm. We'll have to leave it there. Victoria Cooper, thank you very much for your time.